this video, I would like to teach you how to use the graph to write the formula of the particular function. So here we have a graph, and we have to consider three facts when we're going to write out uh, this particular function, all right? So one thing is going to be the end behavior, the end behavior of the function. And what I mean by end behavior is what in the world is the graph doing as we go on and on and on forever on the left-hand side, and on and on and on forever on the right hand side. So whenever you basically have a graph going on and on downward in quadrant three, remember this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, right? This is quadrant three, and that's quadrant four, okay? So whenever you have a graph going on and on and on forever down into quadrant three and up into quadrant one, what it tells you is that you're going to have an odd, an odd overall degree, okay? an odd degree. Now what you can do is you can memorize these little facts, if you like. So in other words, what my graph shows is it shows this kind of end behavior, right, where it goes on and on and on forever in the third quadrant, downward, on and on forever, upward in the uh, first quadrant. And that's going to tell me that I have an odd degree, uh, the highest degree that is, so like I maybe it's an x cubed, all right, or maybe it's an x to the fifth or something like that. And uh, what it's also uh, telling me is that I have a positive leading coefficient. In other words, that if it was x cubed, that it would be a positive value or positive 2 or whatever you want to have there or any other uh, odd value uh, for the exponent, the coefficient would be positive. Okay, so if you notice, no one of these four pictures looks identical. So you can memorize this if you want. You can also kind of understand why this is happening. And it's just remember the graph here is just an output of you know whatever x values you're plugging into the function it's giving you the corresponding y's all right so we found out that it's going to be an odd degree so we should anticipate and and that is going to be a positive okay so what i start doing i'll write my formula over here so let's write f of x and the reason why i'm going to write f of x equals is because it told me that that's basically what's on the vertical axis whatever is here what's ever on the vertical axis you're going to write on the left hand side of your equal sign and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of write in some spacers here all right, those are going to be for the factors. Maybe I have three, maybe I have four, you know, maybe I have five of them, whatever the case, maybe I have one, whatever the case is. So I'm going to, I, I know they're going to be odd. Well, technically, I already know that it's going to be an odd number. So I, I don't have two, I don't have four, I don't have, you know, six, etc. cetera. Um, but what I do also know now from the given information is that I'm going to leave a little space here in a different color, and this will represent the sign. Okay, the leading coefficient. So I know that it's going to be positive, so you can just plug in your little positive sign there. Okay, the next thing then is going to be to identify the x-intercepts. Okay, x-intercepts. Now the x-intercepts, this is very simple. You go to your graph and you're going to locate the places where the function crosses. Okay, that x-axis. So we've got three particular positions where it crosses the x-axis, right? And the x-value here is going to be negative 2, right? So I have an x-intercept that x is equal to negative 2. I also have an x-intercept when x is equal to 1, and have an x-intercept when x is equal to 3, okay? Now, what we want to do is we want to turn these values into factors, right? So you're kind of doing the reverse of finding an x-intercept. You're going back to the factor. Remember, factors are written basically like this, where you have, generally speaking, some x value to the first power. It may have a coefficient in front of it. It might not. But you have some x value, plus or minus, some other constant number, all right? And this constant, by the way, could be zero. In other words, if it is zero, it would just be x by itself. And you might have it raised to some power, and that power could be one or two or three or four. It shouldn't be zero, okay? That, that should not be zero. So this is kind of what I'm looking to do now. I'm, I'm trying to turn these uh, x-intercept values now into factors, okay? So all you have to do now is whatever the value of that intercept is, if it's negative, you're going to make it positive, and then just plug in the value you have, meaning 2. Okay, that's going to be one of the factors. Then I'm going to do x. If I had a positive 1 here, then it's going to be minus 1. And if I had a 3 here, then it's going to be x minus 3. Okay, these right now are my factors. Okay, so hopefully that kind of makes sense, the pattern there. Um... Yeah, it, I'm trying to think if it, yeah, it's not really going to change, right? No matter what, no matter if this graph just bumped at a point and came back down, it doesn't matter. As long as it touches that x-axis, you're going to write down those x-values because it is an x-intercept, and then you're just going to find the factors like you 
uh, you know, it's, we're just going backwards, right? As probably you are more familiar with finding these x-intercepts from the factors. So we're just trying to go backwards, all right? So now uh, what we're looking to do is I have to now find that I found those x-intercepts. I'll call this now, that's may, maybe two, step 2a, we'll call it, and this will be step b. You want to now find the multiplicity of each, all right? And the multiplicity, I'll leave a link in the description below on a general video I have for multiplicities and why odd multiplicities cross and why even multiplicities just bump. Uh, but basically, um, what we realize here at these locations that the function will cross the x-axis. It doesn't, it doesn't come up and bump and then come back down, okay? Whenever it actually crosses the x-axis, like it does here in all three spots, you know you're going to have an odd multiplicity, okay? Now, don't confuse that with the overall and with the overall degree of the function. It just so turned out that the overall degree of the function will be odd, and then each of these multiplicities will be odd, but that has no relationship really between one another, okay? So, being that they all cross, I know that my exponents here, the powers, are all going to be odd. Now, you might say, okay, well, that's great, but is it 1, 3, 5, 7, 9? You know, what do you got going on here? So, basically, when the function kind of crosses here in like a straight line, like, like we got, okay, when it crosses in a straight line, that's going to be just to the first power. If it were to kind of do a little, a little zigzag where it comes up and it kind of does something like that, maybe that's then going to be to the third power. But it's hard to really determine whether it's to the third power or the fifth power or the seventh power, because what basically starts to happen is that the function starts to flatten out even a little more. This might be to the third power, this might be to the fifth power, etc. And it would be very, very difficult to tell from a graph. So in this particular case, they're also talking about the least degree. So the least degree here, if I know it's odd, the least value would be a one. All right, so I'm just going to plug in a one as the exponent for every one of those factors. And that basically takes care of that, okay? And so the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to find that y-intercept, okay? I'm going to find the y-intercept. And just remember, the y-intercept is the location or the y-value where the function will cross the y-axis, or in this case, the f of x value, right? f of x is kind of synonymous with y here. So the y-intercept here is going to be a value of 3, all right? And that will become important possibly, all right, depending upon how this whole thing is going to work out. So after we got all of this stuff kind of labeled out, we can basically find the function, okay? So f of x, what we're going to now do, you can drop this positive sign because if, if, if you don't put anything there, right, it's assumed to be a positive. And we're going to place in now our three factors in those three positions, okay? So it's going to be x plus 2, it's going to be then x minus 1, and then it's going to be x minus 3. All right. Now, what we have to do is we have to do one and all these to the first power, but you don't have to write that in, okay? Because, it, again, it's assumed. Now, there's one other thing I got to check, okay? We're really close, but I don't know if this is exactly right yet because I have to make sure. I definitely know that these are the factors, right? But I don't know that if I plug in 0, let's say, for x, okay? If I plug in 0 for x... Does this whole side work out to be 3? Now, that has to happen, okay? The reason why is because, remember, with the y-intercept, your x-coordinate is 0, and then your y-coordinate is 3. And what this is telling you, that when you plugged in 0 to your function for x, the y-value or the function value better come out to be 3. So why don't we check that, okay? Let's start plugging in some of the stuff. Let me just erase this, clean it up. So let's plug in 0 now for x. Okay, so we'll have f of x equaling 0 plus 2, 0 minus 1, and 0 minus 3. Let's clean it up a little bit. We got f of x is equal to now 2 times negative 1 times negative 3. And uh-oh, uh-oh, this is working out to be a positive 6. That's not equal to 3. Oop, did we do something wrong? No, we absolutely did not do anything wrong. Okay, we didn't do anything wrong. All you now have to do, you have to make this work somehow. Okay, that's what you have to do. So what I would do here, actually, I'm just thinking about it. What might e even be a actually better technique is let's do this. Yeah, actually, this might even work better. Let's add something here. I'm going to extend this line a little bit. Okay, extend that line. And I'm going to put a letter C there. Okay, for constant, okay, or for coefficient if you want. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to also place that in here. Okay. So what I'm trying to illustrate now, and you can put the positive sign there. You don't really need it at the moment. All right. What I'm going to try to illustrate now is when you now plug in zero for your function. Okay. When you plug in zero for X, the function's value better work out to be three. In other words, the f of x value here has to be a three. Now what we found was we found that this did not work out to be a three, it worked out to be a six. But guess what? That is a-ok. -okay. And the reason why it is a-ok -okay is because I now have kind of a variable I added into this, meaning some constant. Now what you can do is you can solve this for that leading constant or that leading coefficient, right? You would divide six by both sides and you would then get one half, right? Is equal to C. Now we have basically everything we possibly need. Okay, we have everything we need now. Okay, so now you can go back to this original thing. You can get rid of the positive C. Okay, I'm going to place that in now as just a one half because that's the leading coefficient. And then each of these three now places, I'm going to plug in now my x plus 2, my x minus 1, and then my x minus 3. So that's how you can always do it, okay? You can always approach the problem in exactly the same way, and you will arrive at the same answer. Now, if you had to foil all this stuff and kind of get it into the x cubed form to see that it is an odd degree, that's, that's just algebra from here. I have no idea if, you know, this is a formula though, right? I mean, that is the formula. Um, you can... Now, foil all this stuff if you need. Uh, you don't have to, though. But, you know, you can always then go back and check yourself with the calculator. All right, and see if it works out. But that's all it is. So, guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this helped. If it does, like and subscribe. Even tell some of your classmates. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.